Now we're going to graph all of these. A and B we've done already, and C is the first time that we're going to be seeing a vertical shift. So, first of all, we know that our sine graph looks like this. What does the three out in front change? It's going to change our minimum and our maximum, our amplitude. It's still going to go from 0 to 2 pi, split it up into four sections. Sine graph starts in the middle, goes to a max, back to the middle, down to a minimum, back to the middle. There's part A, changing only the amplitude. For part B, oh, and this one said between 0 and 2 pi, so I should erase some stuff. Perfect. For part B, now that 3 is inside. What does that affect? It's horizontal compression by 1 third. That's going to affect our period. Our period, instead of being 2 pi, is now going to be 2 pi over 3. What's half of 2 pi over 3? Pi over 3. What's half of pi over 3? Pi over 6. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. I could have reduced that to pi over 2, but I'll just write 3 pi over 6 for now. The amplitude of this one is still going to be 1. And negative 1. It's a sine graph. Sine graph starts in the middle, then goes to the maximum, back to the middle, down to the minimum, back to the middle. And I've drawn it with the arrows again, and they say only to draw it to 0 to 2 pi, so I'll erase it. Perfect. Oh, from 0 to 2 pi. Oh. Perfect. Now that's probably not very accurate of where it ended at 2 pi. I could figure that out exactly, but I'm not really concerned about that right now. But does it make sense? You'd have to keep going. In fact, it will work out to be perfectly, I do know, sorry, I lied. It will work out to be perfectly there. Because if you compress it by a third, there will now be three, count them, one, two, oh, smoke, three, nice, three complete periods between zero and two pi, because you've compressed it by a third. Okay? If you draw this on your test, I'm going to be mad at you for neatness, but I can get away with that. Now, part C, what's going to happen to our graph if we have that plus 3 at the end? It's going to move up 3. How are we going to show that for graphing, and what, is, what are we going to use as strategies? Is any time that you move something up or down, it's going to affect your center line. Your center line... Your sinusoidal axis, your average, was always at zero. And we didn't do anything with it. But as soon as we move our graph up and down, we're going to draw a horizontal line, label it as y equals 3 to label our sinusoidal axis. Because it's going to help us graph sine, cos, and tan, well, sine and cos quicker, and is what we're going to look at maybe tomorrow or Monday, it's going to allow us to graph it quicker without having to do the same kind of transformation rules that we did in the past. Because these points on a sine and cosine graph with pi and pi over 2, when you're multiplying and adding numbers to them, it's very easy to make some mental math mistakes. So what we're going to find out is, well, since the center line is at 3, our amplitude is still going to be 
1. So what is the maximum this is going to go up to? 4, and the minimum 2. We still have a, we're still going to divide this into four sections. Our period hasn't changed. It's still 2 pi, so we can divide this to pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And where does our cos, I mean our sine graph start? Sine graph always started in the middle. And by drawing that dotted line of our sinusoidal axes, we know that it's going to start here. Then go to a maximum, back to the middle, down to the minimum, and back to the middle again. And I've drawn too much. And erased too many numbers. Perfect. So that D value is going to be our sinusoidal axis. It's going to move it up and down. And we can actually use some of these patterns of the fact that our D value is always going to be our sinusoidal axis. Our A value is always going to be our amplitude. Our B value is always going to affect our period, because our period is going to be 2 pi over B for sine and cos, or pi over B for tan. We're going to put all those together and create a way of graphing sine and cos quickly without having to do the transformations from left to right. You still could do transformations from left to right, A, then B, then C, then D, but some of these things are going to give us shortcuts. Like the fact that we know the D is going to be our sinusoidal axis, we can actually start with our D value. And then our amplitude, our A, will be able to find out what our max and our min is just by going up and down from our sinusoidal axis. We'll be able to label our period along the bottom, and we'll be able to draw it with a dotted line to see what it looks like before we shift it left and right. And finally, we'll end with shifting it left and right. So that's what we're leading towards in the next section, is putting all of these transformations together. Questions you can do for this one are six and seven.